And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a little bit older title. Uh, earlier I did a review of a lot of the Mystery Rummy titles, of the official and the unofficial, and this is in that same series, but is a little bit different style of game, and this is called Wyatt Earp. Uh, this is by Alio and Rio Grande Games, uh, with Richard Borg uh, and Fitzgerald working in conjunction in order to make a game. Now, as I said, this is a Mystery Rummy game. It's going to focus mostly around cards, but the players are going to be playing sets of cards in order to try and catch outlaws and earn money. Uh, there's going to be some special cards, some normal uh, rummy style cards, uh, and money pieces and the board pieces in order to make this game all come together. So real quick, why don't we take a look at the components you get inside this box, how the game plays, and then I'll come back and sum it all up with my final opinions. So here you can see the setup for Wyatt Earp, which is a Mystery Rummy card game with a little more depth than some of the other Mystery Rummy games that I've showed you. This one focuses around trying to capture seven different outlaws, all of whom have rewards for capturing them on the board in the form of money. Uh, and you're going to be using cards from your hand. Each player will have a hand of cards in order to try and play sets, which are going to give you capture points for capturing these that you'll count at the end of the round. Now, on your turn, you're going to be drawing and playing cards. Uh, and on each turn, you must either draw two cards from the top of the deck or take the top card of the discard pile. So I would take my two cards from the top of the deck and then I'm going to be able to play cards from my hand. Now, what I'm trying to play are sets of cards matching outlaws, and a set of cards is going to be three different cards, uh, or actually three of cards all of the same color, uh, all for the same outlaw. You'll see these here are for Billy the Kid, uh, and have two capture points for Billy the Kid at the top. Now, you're going to have to have at least three to play them to the table as a set. When you play a set to the table, you are going to add money to the appropriate outlaw equal to 1,000 times the number of cards you played minus 1,000. So, for example, in this case it would be 1,000 times 3 minus 1,000 is 2,000 points, or $2,000, get added to Billy the Kid. And now I have a set of Billy the Kid out in front of me uh, that other players can actually play off of on their turn. And in order to do that, they would just play their Billy the Kid cards from their hand out in front of them and add money to the card appropriately, always adding 1,000 times the number of cards played minus 1,000. So if they were to play one more card, nothing would get added, but if they were to play two more cards, another $1,000 would go out on Billy the Kid. Additionally, in each turn, you're going to be able to play one what is called a Sheriff card. And there are several different types of Sheriff cards that all have different effects, so why don't we go over some of them real quick. We have the Most Wanted card, and you can tell these are Sheriff cards because they have a little star in the corner. Uh, and you're going to be able to play one of these per turn, and they're going to have some type of effect. For example, this one says two different things. You can either uh, take one Outlaw card from another opponent's hand, you won't know what it is, but you can take a card from their hand. Or, or after a successful shot, which is a special type of thing in the game, you can take an Outlaw from their board in front of them, so you'd know exactly what you're getting. Uh, and you'd be able to put that out in front of you. Now. A shot involves playing this card to the table, saying you're taking the shot, and flipping the top card of this deck. You actually get to draw the card, uh, and if it has a bullet hole on it, your shot is successful. You keep this card, your card that you played, uh, in this case would go to the discard pile, uh, and you would be able to do the, the effect that says after a successful shot. Otherwise, you're going to get nothing. So I'd get that card, and I would have completed that shot successfully, I'd get to take the card that I wanted from the player's area. We also have Fastest Gun. This one says after a successful shot, so same type of thing. You can place uh, this on any outlaw set you have, so I could add it to my uh, Billy the Kid outlaws. And it's going to also add $1,000 reward to the person. Only one person can have the fastest gun on the table, so if anybody else had played one of these cards, it would immediately go away. But you can see it adds three capture points to that outlaw for me, which is going to be good at the end of the round. We also have Hideout. This is actually going to negate somebody's set of cards. If you play this uh, after a successful shot, you put it on top of somebody's set. So, for example, somebody put it on top of my uh, Billy the Kid set. They no longer count for this round. We have Wyatt Earp cards, and these have three potential effects. One, uh, you can take two cards from the card supply, so it lets you draw two more cards. Two, you can take any card from the discard pile, or three, after a successful shot, uh, you can remove the hideout. So I can play this and get rid of my hideout, and now my cards count again. And there are more cards in this, uh, this manner. They're all going to do different things. You have a photo which adds four and some money to your guy, or you have the bank robbery which is going to uh, let you get more money on one of the outlaws, 
or you have robbing the stagecoach, which lets you place uh, on any outlaw $3,000, so even more money. But each turn you can play as many of these cards as long as they either make a set or match a set that's already been played. You can play one sheriff card and then you're going to have to discard a card to the discard pile. Being careful what you discard because maybe your opponent needs it. You're going to go in this manner until one player manages to discard their last card, or if they manage to get rid of their other, la other cards in a different way, until somebody else discards a card after someone has already gone out of cards. Or there's a third way you can actually end the round, is if the draw pile is exhausted twice. And you're going to actually look and see who has the most capture points for each, he uh, each of the um, criminals. And you're first going to check and see if there's at least eight capture points on the table for a criminal. So if there was at least four of these cards out, there's eight capture points. And if there is, you're going to divide up the points. Otherwise, nobody's going to get the money for any of the heroes, or for the hero that doesn't have eight points. Uh, when you do this, you're going to check and see if the person who has the most has at least five more than anyone else. If they do, they're going to get all of the money on that person. So they would take all of this money for... Billy the Kid if there was at least eight capture points out and they won by at least five. If they didn't win by at least five, everyone who has at least four capture points is going to get some type of share. The person who has the most is going to get the first $2,000. Then, let's say there's a bunch more money on here, you're going to go around the table and everybody else is going to get money in turn order, everyone who has at least four capture points. They're going to take $1,000 and they're going to add it to their pool. The next person who has four capture points gets $1,000. And so on and so forth, all the way around the table until all of the money is gone, or at least two of the people who are tied can't get their money. So, there is a benefit to trying to keep people uh, below five in excess of anyone else, but still to have enough points to split the money because you can't get points unless you get at least at eight capture points. The game will start a new round after this with the, the deal shifting to the next player on the left. Dealing out 10 more cards, playing a whole nother round in Mystery Army style until one player manages to get $25,000, or 25 little chits, or 5 of these $5,000 chits. And the player who gets the most money in the round that at least one person passes $25,000 is going to be the winner. And there you have Wyatt Earp. Now this is one of the best, if not the individual best, game in the Mystery Rummy series, official or unofficial. And the reason that is true is because this is a card game which tries to mitigate some of the luck while adding additional luck in the form of those shot cards. Uh, the interaction between players, the ability to steal other players' cards or make their cards not count, uh, while still trying to advance your own goals, uh, add more money to the individual criminal that you're trying to catch or to remove money from other criminals, uh, or simply to try and deny a player or all players the ability to get the money from any criminal at the end of a round at several levels of strategy that can all be utilized in order to best win the game. And so this is a Mystery Rummy game uh, that if you have a chance to pick it up, I would definitely suggest doing so. If you're a fan of Rummy or Mystery Rummy, I think this is one that you can't afford to miss, uh, and one that I think belongs in many different type of players' collections. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.